Sitting, sitting is the opposite of standing. Hi, everyone. Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd. And it's time for a weekly track roundup. My thoughts, my feelings on a bunch of songs that have dropped over the past week or so. Whether I loved them or hated them or felt somewhere in between, they're all linked down below, okay? Along with, of course, our Turntable Lab link, we get kick back from it. If you go over there and you buy some uh, Turntable stuff, some vinyl, some whatever, it's there and it helps us out. Thank you. And uh, also our Patreon page. If you want to get some extra bonus monthly content while supporting us in the process, that would be amazing. Yeah, it would. It would be great. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's get into, uh, yeah, also shout out to the shorts page. Uh, join up over there as well. Worst tracks of the week. Yeah, worst tracks of the week. Uh, let's go. We have uh, uh, some deluxe material from the new Killer Mike record, uh, one being this Act Up track featuring Young Nudie. Why are we throwing songs on here with features that we're not even bothering to mix properly into the track? I mean, can't even hear the guy's voice and some of uh, the weaker bars from uh, this record, in my opinion, from Mike. Kind of a dud, uh, but it's an extra, so whatever. Uh, we also have a new one from Madison, Beer, Sweet Relief, uh, one of the most ungratifying and boring pop songs I have heard in a minute, but let's move on. All right, meh, they are as follows. We got a new one from Yule over here. We are teasing toward this new record so much. And look, I'm, I'm pretty open to the idea that the entire body of work may grow on me when I hear it from front to back. Uh, but I kind of feel like this new track, Soft Scars, while it does almost have like some uh, electro and maybe a little trip hop uh, energy to it on the instrumental end, I think that the tune is a bit bland and the vocals could use maybe a bit more oomph. And I, I thought that a lot of the uh, strange ambient, uh, you know, very soft experimental pop uh, vibes of the last record were a bit more, a bit more unique and interesting, but you know, I, I guess I'll see if the uh, record really grows on me when it's uh, all the way out. Uh, we have a new one over here from Lil Yachty who strangely enough has, um, recruited elusive New York rapper Despot uh, for a new track over here uh, titled Rain. It's very raw. It's very lo-fi. It's like not the best put together track I've ever heard. But uh, the fact that it is so out there is what also makes it kind of intriguing. Uh, I like Despot's uh, verse on the back end quite a bit. And I think, um, you know, the, the lo-fi sparkly uh, instrumental, <clears throat> if it were cleaner, Maybe there'd be something more to it, but, um, you know, uh, maybe these two will do something again in the future. I don't know. It's just a very strange, like, crossover of worlds. I'll, I'll say that. Uh, we also have a uh, one from Sleepy Hollow. You know, there are elements of this track that I like. Um, the sample of Gautier, somebody that I used to know. Uh, the Dochi chorus is very well sung, uh, too on this track, but uh, I, I feel like Hallow's flows leave a lot to be desired, and some of the one-liners, well, the track is pretty much all one-liners. Um, some of the one-liners are seriously, you know, uh, what are you going to do? All right, uh, Hellcats and SRTs too. basically Sexy Red coming with a remix of this track, just to get a little Dirk in the mix. Does he improve the song or anything like that? Not particularly. Uh, I, I guess... Um, if I want to hear this track, I'll listen to the original uh, because, you know, if, if you are going to do a redo, I would expect to maybe get it like, you know, revamped on the production end or, you know, redo the vocals or something like that, because th this is one of like Sexy Red's raw and messier tracks, which, again, as far as the original goes, is fine. If you're going to revisit this whole thing, I feel like adding to it and making it a little bit tighter would have, you know, kind of been worth it, especially, you know, since you have a big name like Lil Durk uh, popping in to, uh, you know, add to the track. But it just kind of seems like, you know, the same basic song, but just Lil Durk on it now, which again, I don't think like draws me more to the track per se. All right. Uh, we have a new one from Poppy as well. It is titled Motorbike. It is a uh, <laughs> very driven and suggestive track, uh, but having a hot, 
piece of machinery between your legs. Um, yeah, it's, it, it's not bad. I guess like aesthetically, it's not exactly the type of sound and vibe that I think Poppy thrives over best, but you know, I, I suppose that's just my, uh, personal opinion. All right. Um, let's also take into account this, uh, a new track over here from offset. Uh, who has a new record on the way, Set It Off. Fan is our first taste of it. And uh, this one has some interesting moments, especially on the back end. But I will say, like the best ideas as far as flow and instrumental uh, on this record that are the best, the, the most standout ideas, just kind of seem like redos and rehashes of like, you know, 3 Six Mafia and Juicy J tracks. Uh, the uh, the front end of the song is a bit of a rough start, too, in my opinion. All right, uh, we have a new one over here from Jockstrap, who are coming through with a, a remixed version of their last record. Uh, and it seems like they're getting pretty crazy and ambitious with the uh, the remixes, because we have this new track here titled Red Eye, which is so wild and out there and changed and revamped, it might as well be a new track, uh, featuring Ian Starr. And, you know, this version, or this, you know, new revision is essentially like this this really hyper aggressive lo-fi noise rap song with just an insane verse on it. Um, maybe it's a little too rough and abrasive uh, to, you know, kind of keep my attention, but it, it is explosive all the same. I, I will say that. Uh, moving on from there, we have a new cover of the track Chop Suey, System of Downs, Chop Suey uh, from Earth Eater. I mean, it's a little long. It's a little tedious at points, but I can't deny it. It, it is an interesting cover to hear the song redone like acoustically and with so many haunting and strange like vocal passages and effects. So, you know, if, if you want to hear the song reinvented in an intriguing way, give this cover a listen. All right. Uh, we have uh, this new track from Drake and SZA. Uh, which I reviewed on the Fantano channel, I thought was okay, Slime You Out. Um, I think it's one of Drake's more ambitious singles in a while because there is kind of a concept to it. There is kind of a narrative to it. Uh, I will say his singing and vocal performance on the front end get a little tedious. Uh, the rapping on the back end, I don't think add that much to the song and story overall, but uh, the instrumental has a nice swing to it and SZA kills it on the track. And again, I do appreciate that it does kind of follow a narrative, a line, a story, a something. It's trying to get something across. It's not just, you know, Drake indulging in his success over and over and over again. It's uh, actually kind of, you know, trying to communicate something, which again, appreciate liking that. All right. Uh, moving on from there, new one from Animal Collective with a vaguely almost like Latin or tropical track over here on this cut, Gemini. Um, you know, there, there's elements of what it's going for that I like, uh, but then again, I think the chorus and the progression of the song get kind of stale uh, by the end of it as well. Could have used a little bit more change-ups, a little more spice, a little more something, I suppose. New record on the way, though. All right, best tracks of the week. We have a bunch of those. Let's start shouting them out. Uh, we have a new one from Denzel Curry Sked, Kenny Mason. Kenny Mason actually kills it. Uh, on his verse on this track. And I like that Denzel Curry is kind of like, you know, uh, simplifying things after that very kind of personal and complicated record that he just dropped. And just giving a straight up hard hitting raw bangers with this latest string of singles. And uh, Sked, I think, is one of the best of them so far. So, you know, really cool to see uh, Denzel uh, constantly shifting, changing, morphing, doing something different, reinventing himself. It's refreshing. All right. Uh, next, we have a, another taste of the forthcoming Sufjan Stevens record, Javelin. Uh, this one is a heartbreaker titled, Will Anybody Ever Love Me? It comes to a uh, very sad and epic finish as well. I think it's one of his better ballads in a while. It's a great one. All right. Uh, moving on from there, we have a new one over here from Mount Kimby and King Cruel is in the mix. Now, if you're familiar at all with like Mount Kimby's music, their contributions to, you know, the electronic scene, you might come into this track with certain expectations, but production wise, uh, this kind of just feels like, you know, a lo-fi bedroom rock track with super fuzzy guitars, which I don't really mind. It seems like the whole point of it is to, you know, serve King Cruel's style and, and, you know, Archie's vibe and, uh, and it works. It works. Works. You know, I think it almost sounds like kind of an old school, you know, King Cruel track um, uh, or something like that as a result of, you know, uh, Mount Kimby taking this approach and angle to the song. So, you know, I think it's great. 
I think it, uh, you know, again, fits Archie's vibe. He gives a great vocal performance. And uh, yeah, if you know, if you like uh, some very sad lo-fi balladry, check it out. Which, uh, you know, again, if I did not, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, state it outright, the title of the song is Boxing. All right. Uh, Blood Incantation. One of the most beloved modern death metal bands right now has come through with a new big double single. Uh, the A side of it is this epic multi-phase track with a cool little synth odyssey in the middle of it uh, titled Obliquity of the Ecliptic. I say words. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, you know, I, I think these guys are really uh, bringing some awesome and uh, versatile ideas to uh, death metal without really kind of like watering down the rawness and, you know, kind of the brooding and creepy and uh, gruesome nature of the genre. They're ambitious uh, without losing touch with, uh, you know, what makes death metal death metal. And that would make that that's that's that continues to be uh, what makes Blood Incantation uh, such a cool and interesting band. And uh, that is certainly, uh, you know, no, uh, no different for this new song over here. In fact, uh, with it being as long and again, as multi-phased as it is, I would say they are just getting better at that as the years draw on. So, uh, you know, really awesome to hear them continue that mission on this new cut. All right, we have a new one over here from Ichiko Aoba. And uh, this is actually one of her uh, most lavishly produced and arranged uh, ballads yet. Um, almost like a, a bit of a, you know, like an old world vocal pop or like vocal jazz style song in a way. The strings are killer. And, um, you know, again, I can't wait to uh, potentially hear her uh, over more arrangements like this because this is uh, this is powerful. This is incredible. This is a uh, uh, pretty, 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 pretty. Uh, in such a way where it's uh, almost indescribable. All right, moving on from there, a uh, shout out to one of the OGs of Hyperpop. That would be Hannah Diamond, brand new cut titled Poster Girl. I think it's one of her best singles in a while, and it's attached to a little EP as well. Uh, you know, if, if you want to get into this track and it's kind of glitzy, retro futuristic production, uh, just, uh, you know, look for the link down below. And I think you'll appreciate kind of the narrative of, you know, falling in love with the image of of, you know, someone as well. It's uh, got quite the uh, story to it too. So check it out. All right. Uh, shout out as well to G Jones. Uh, Remnant is the name of this new track. And it's got like this, um, almost like an old, you know, like beat music or kind of like, you know, wonky or purple sound kind of energy to it with the, you know, kind of glitchy and super uh, twinkly synths and electronics, uh, the heavy beat as well. I'm liking it a lot. You know, it does feel like a throwback, but I think it's a, a well done one. If, if that's even what the intention of the track is, it's a bop either way. Uh, it's a bop. All right. Uh, we have a new one over here from Earl and the Alchemist. Uh, from their new record that, uh, you know, is eventually going to hit streaming. It was, you know, like a kind of coming out through an NFT platform previously. Uh, Vince Staples is in the mix on the track. The Caliphate is uh, the title of the cut. And uh, yeah, you know, just a great instrumental from Uncle Al. Earl and Vince have fantastic chemistry on the cut and, uh, you know, some thoughtful and... Um, uh, intriguing lyrics and, uh, you know, sports references from Vince Earl's kind of getting into his past a little bit in a very coded way, lyrically on the track. That's a good one all around. I think it's a, you know, certainly a, a better than that track with Mike that got dropped recently. So, all right, we have a new one from Doja Cat. Doja Cat coming through with a super smooth jazz rap cut where she's just rippity rap, rap, rapping in a, a very kind of cool, collected, couldn't be bothered sort of way. I'm liking it. I'm enjoying it. I'm respecting it. I'm liking that. It's not like, you know, uh, continuing to obsessively dive into this. Oh, nobody likes me. Nobody likes me. Nobody likes me, you know, sort of thing. Or I'm, I'm rejecting my fame, but somehow still super famous. Whatever. Uh, but yeah, I'm liking this track a lot. Big Thief have a wonderful, powerful Beautiful little love ballad that is uh, now the uh, B-side of this Vampire Empire cut. Um, the title of this one is Born for Loving You. And uh, moving on from there, we have Ana Frango Electrico, one of the most interesting artists out of Brazil right now. Absolutely smashing it again with another jazzy, danceable single with great arrangements and fantastic uh, vocals on the front end. Insista and Mim is the title of this one. And finally, uh, Mr. Aesop Rock, Integrated Tech Solutions, new album on the way, and this uh, debut, or rather, you know, uh, inaugural single for the record is uh, a really cool kind of like technologically 
centered cut kind of talking about, you know, the advancement of human technology over various eras of, of mankind in a very uh, kind of funny and knowing and smart and tongue in cheek way, because that's what the hell Aesop Rock does and does best. Uh, Mindful Solutionism is the name of the cut. And uh, that is pretty much going to be it for this weekly track roundup. Everybody, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you got some good recommendations out of this video. I will see you guys in the next one. Mwah. Anthony Fantano, weekly tracks forever.